A quick thank you to the T5 peeps, Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Estrella the Dreamer, Mesic, Pudic Yol, and Casper Arnholtz. Thank you very much. Fear and a Human Bureaucrat, written by Thomas Ray Mainstone. Under normal circumstances, Sato's Tavoni would be a very mild mannered for a Dilma. Though most of her species were known for their spontaneity, strength, and predisposition to violence, Sotas prided herself on breaking the stereotype, where her podkin might act swiftly and rashly when confronted with a problem. Her own goals were achieved via slow and deliberate actions, unless violence was truly required. Then again, when one builds and runs a vast criminal empire stretching across half the galaxy, violence is often a useful means to an end. Satuza's ability to maintain her calm demeanor under stress was one trait that attracted so many Dilma, took to and Zilzan to her employ and left her competition to often underestimate her strength and cunning. Not that they were much of a threat to begin with. Both the Maota and Star Criminal Syndicates were often cast in the same light as the Tavoni by the Galactic Authorities. But anyone with half a brain knew that such a comparison had as much life to it as some accretion disks of Black Hall. Which is to say, none. This is what made Uthuz wheeze with surprise when he entered Sotoza's office to find her furiously tapping away at a holodesk display, all six of her tentacles rapidly stabbing and swiping at numerous pages open in front of her. Mom? he asked cautiously as he slipped into the room. What's going on? Uthuz had never seen his podmother so disheveled. Her abnormally dry skin was fraught with anxious black streaks, while her eyes were bloodshot with streaks of blue lining her three slitted yellow irises. They were quickly darting around, taking in vast swaths of information in front of her as she worked tirelessly. The sight of her in such a primal state shocked him, causing black streaks to form on his own body. Upon seeing her anxious spawn, Tattoos pulled away from the screens and slid around to embrace him. Oh, it's nothing, my dear. Uh, don't worry, she said soothingly. Unfortunately, such tactics only still worked on her youngest spawn, and Althuz was less than a galactic cycle away from adulthood. Althuz pulled away from her, glaring at his podmother. No, no more lies, Mom, he paused, yellow swirls dancing on his damp skin as he summoned his courage. I've seen the staff clearing out the storage bays and resource tanks. What exactly is happening? Delivered, said Toes, swore to herself. She knew tasking the crew to perch the station while her spawn slept was a risk, but with so little time left, it was one that she had to take. Wrapping a tentacle around her thews, she slid to her desk, putting him into a chair beside her. Blue screen swaths swirled over the skin as he looked at his part mother's displays, which contained a plethora of spreadsheets. Mom, why are you going through the financials? He inquired slowly, looking closer. He saw numerous lines of half-deleted text and numbers, causing him to step back in astonishment. No, wait. Why in goddess's name are you deleting all of this? Tattoo sighed. It's those blasted humans. Goddess, forsake them. The who now? Elthus asked. The humans, she answered quickly, putting up an image in front of them with a few swipes of a tentacle. Elthus gaped at the odd biped that stood in front of them. They weren't even half as tall as him and only had two short upper limbs to boot. They don't look so tough, he said, the yellow streaks of his tentacles growing more vibrant. What could these small mammals possibly do to the Tinvonis? He looked up expectantly at his mother, whose stoic expression didn't seem to match his confident retort. I mean, come on, Mom. You're one of the most powerful beings in the galaxy, right up next to the Primarch. Satu's was silent for a moment, her skin awash with black, blue, and green swirls as she thought. Mom, Athuz asked again, more tenacious this time. Do you know how I uh, How we grew to be this powerful? She asked a spawn after some thought. Althus pondered the question for a moment. I mean, it's all thanks to you. You've outsmarted the competition. You're not afraid to do what needs to be done. You'll stop at nothing to expand the family and uh, prosper, he trailed off. That is all true, the pod mother said reluctantly. But I'm talking more about how us Tavoni strive so much more than the Maota and stars. Althuz remained silent. Quite simply, she said after a moment, 
we were the first to go legitimate. Even though the Empire at the time saw to everyone's needs and desires to a point, we were the first to realize that individuals wanted more. Smuggling drugs and exotic formula. Monopolizing valuable resources, building galactic brothels from the ground up. Our family ushered in an age of organized crime. Inhaling deeply, she allowed a purple nostalgia to envelop her form. Chasing around that black box lingered. She looked down at a spawn, who was positively hooked on her words. And then? Then I made a special deal with the Primarch. What deal? Malthus was excited. This was new territory for him to gain his pod mother's insight. The deal that made us who we are now, Satu's smiled. The Marta and the stars were in the midst of developing their own exotic trades and industries, and the Empire was fighting a losing battle trying to control all the families by force. Reaching over the desk with a tentacle, she brought up a cool cup of water to her lips. She drank a deep, refreshing gulp, letting out a long breath of air that she continued. The Empire would recognize us as the first private conglomerate ahead of the other families, and in exchange we'd give uh, special goods and services to the military and various high officials. Although he wasn't privy to the specifics, Sulthus knew enough about the Tavoni family's enterprises to guess that special goods and services referred to their weapons manufacturing and trafficking operations. Still, the critical question remained unanswered, and he wasn't leaving until he got one that satisfied him. But what do these humans have to do with this, Mom? The purple that had mostly covered her brightened to a red before mostly fading to black. And the young Dulna could see his mother begin to shake in her seat. The humans are a different kind of creature compared to the other galactic races, she started. Born of endless war, they remain the only species that continues to be fractured into different regional states. Unlike everyone else who joined the Empire, most humans don't live under the communal system. Rather, their history led them to embrace the same individualistic desires we exploit before they even made first contact. Blue-green patterns dotted the youngling's skin. Wait, so they aren't unified? How can they even be part of the Empire? He asked incredulously. At this, Sotus laughed, a shimmer of pink briefly washing down her tentacles. Oh, my son... The humans are even more fractured amongst themselves than are the Imperial regions. Ilthus leaned back in his chair in disbelief. To have more localities than even 85 of the Empire, even before first contact. The thought ran counter to nearly everything he knew about Xena politics. No species had developed FTR before they unified their homeworld, much less remained broken up as they began to leave their system. Just how split up are they? Satu's side, leaning back in her chair. I believe at the time of first contact, they were divided into nearly 200 sovereign states. On their home world, Athus exclaimed. At his part mother's affirmation, his skin became awash with a sea of green and blue. But, but, how? The Tavoni matriarch thought her child would have many questions, but surprisingly, he wasn't able to form any more. Anyhow, my dear boy, she said, dragging his mind back to the present moment. She looked down at her spawn, the unusual black streaks that appeared around her bloodshot eyes sending a chill through her thews. To make a long story short, the humans have made a better deal with the Primarch than we have. How? he blurted out, taking his part mother by surprise as his face reddened. How could they make a better deal than we, when you work directly with the Primarch? Satus waited patiently for Uthus to settle down before answering with a question of her own. Uthus to Vodi, what is the Empire's greatest weakness? He thought to himself briefly. Corruption? He guessed based on what he had learned from his Zazan tutor. That's right, said his podmother with a grin. Prideful orange appearing next to her eyes as she rubbed his head with a tentacle. It is a weakness we've exploited for many cycles to build all we have today. She motioned around her ornate office, filled with priceless art, jewelry, and decor that rivaled the Regia Imperatorium itself. With so many corrupt high officials, nearly all day-to-day -day imperial enforcement falls upon the regional duchies, many of whom spare no private love for the Primarch. The only real power the fool holds comes from the military he wields and the Ordo Imperialized Sancti. Without those two tools, 
She held up two tentacles to illustrate her point. The prime mark has no power, and Shish's systems collapse. But that doesn't happen, Othul's pointed out. The military is stronger than ever, and the church gains more followers every day. Indeed they are. Despite that, taxes are not paid in full, investigations are not conducted, and corrupt officials are not replaced. So, why does that matter if everything still works like it does? It matters, because the humans promised to restore that value. Satu's hissed, tinges of red lining joining the black splotches covering her body. You see, my love, humans aren't as strong or as us, Dilda, nor are they as fast as the Jaktu or as studious as the Zilzan. But what they lack in these classic niches of function, they make up tenfold for their ingenuity, cunning, and persistence. Nathus couldn't help himself as the black marks on his skin expanded further, her words driving his unease. White splotches grew on Satusa's skin as she allowed herself to feel some sympathy for her spawn, before she thought of her urgent work forced darkness to wash away. It was only a matter of time after first contact that the human leadership realized how covetous our Primarch is, she scoffed loudly. The fool! Even as the humans had borrowed their way into the Imperial government, rebuilding entire functions from the ground up, he still remains blind to the power. Ilthus felt his part rather tense as her skin began to glow crimson. Swallowing, he took a small step back. Even if she was renowned for her control, just seeing a Philodilda turn such a color threatened to trigger his own instinctual response. But, he swallowed again, trying to control his emotions as he had been taught, forcing his color to a dull and fade. Well, won't the Primarch eventually realize what the humans have done? He asked tentatively. Can't, can't we just use the military to subjugate them? Satus looked down at her own spawn as her own colors faded and laughed. Subjugate all of the humans. <laughs> she continued to laugh. Her loud guffaws ringing through the office. <laughs> if, if, if if there was a greater exercise in futility, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is. She leaned down to face her spawn directly, lowering her voice into a whispering hiss. Now, listen here, Othus. This, uh, this is a lesson for you to remember about our beloved Primarch. The only thing that man is driven by is greed. Greed to expand his riches and his power. Bending down further, she whispered directly into Althusa's ear. You can promise the universe to a greedy man, and as long as you deliver him a star a day, you'll never question the billions of galaxies you keep to yourself. She pulled away from Althus and gave him a reassuring glance before she stood up, ushering him towards the door. Come now, you must begin to pack your things she said quickly, black shadows discreetly rippling across her skin, unnoticed by the boy. The saucer mind said the human would be here in a day or two, but for what they did not know. The quicker we wipe our presence from this place, the faster life can return to normal. Giving him a gentle nudge, Satu's coaxed a spawn into the hallway. Despite the pod mother's reassurance, Elthus couldn't help the unease that coursed through his tentacles. He looked back at Satu's, and she was closing the door noticing how her dark colors had once again returned. She caught his eye and stumped. Ah, oh, the humans, our enemies. A cacophony of reds and blacks and yellows watched over the twos as she pondered his question for a moment before she broke into a smile. Of course not, my dear. There'll be nothing but a minor nuisance, I'm sure of it. He nodded and turned to slide away. As his part mother closed the door, however, Althus could swear he saw a patch of light grey at the tips of her tentacles. He shook his head as he slithered down the hallway. His eyes must be playing tricks on him. The twos would never show her pale fear. She couldn't. Could she? Eighteen minutes later, the Tavoni matriarch continued to go through the master bookkeeping of her family's operations. Her tentacles flew across the hollow displays, deleting page. After page, line after line of text and numbers, erasing evidence of the Tavoni Enterprise's illicit activities and the connection to the various high imperial officials. Leaning back in her chair, she downed the rest of her water. Half done, she muttered to herself. Gotta stand these humans and their incessant meddling. Actually, Satus thought for a moment, and before long a plan began to shape up in her mind. 
After firing off a bunch of cue mails to her subordinates, she leaned back and couldn't help but let out a quiet giggle. Let's see how much they like their precious Terran ground being trampled on. Her giggle turned into another hearty laugh that echoed through the small space, matching the pink and yellow tones that had appeared on her skin. She was interrupted by an annoying red notification that had appeared on her screen. Opening it, the image of a familiar Zulzan was a rather flustered at the moment filled with the central virtual screen. Miss Tavani, he said the timid male, looking rattled as he pressed the uniform. What is it now, Commander Eulard? She asked, her tone and brown colors indicative of her annoyance and interruption. Ah, uh, ma'am, we've, um, um, he stammered out, his four eyes darting from side to side nervously. Talk! Now, Commander, she said flatly, as some of her brown shades darkened to red. He gulped. So too, Stavani was not the most benevolent employer, nor was she particularly a patient one. We've, um... He steadied himself before continuing. We've just received a, a docking request that you might want to see. You interrupted my work for a docking request, she roared, red ripples spreading across her body. I gave you simple orders. Approve the transports. Turn away anyone else. Is that hard to do? No, ma'am. Um, the commander blurted out that this one, yeah, it's an imperial transponder, ma'am. Although Hewlett couldn't see it, the tips of Sotuza's tentacles had turned black. After some movement from the Zulzan, a new image appeared on the screen in front of her, draining her entire body of color until all that remained was a pale gray. Standing in front of Satu's was an oddly dressed, light-skinned man wearing metal and glass on his face. A black overcoat covered his form along with a ribbon that seemed to hang from his neck, and a small case dangled from a gloved appendage. What caused her to shudder in fear wasn't his attire, though. It was the piercing blue eyes that seemed to cut right through her. Baring its white teeth and a smile, the alien looked like a predator that had just caught its next meal. Despite trying her best to control her colors, none of her technicians managed to coax forth any of her vibrant shades. The creature was the one who interrupted her shocked silence. Hello, I am seeking to dock at a station owned by Miss Satu's Devodi. Hearing the alien speak her native Utra, in its burrish, grunt like tones, broke Satu's out of her state of fear. And who are you exactly? She managed to stammer out, although she didn't think it was possible. The human's grin seemed to widen before he introduced himself. I am Revis U. Officer Jackson Winslow of the GIRS. I've been sent here to conduct an audit. Our agency has noted some uh, discrepancies in your revenue and operations that we would like to resolve. And that, Satu's noticed that two security androids standing behind the human male, both adorned with an assortment of powerful kinetic weaponry, she recognized as distinctly human. Sitting back, she looked at the huge number of records that she had yet to get rid of, and back at the human standing here in front of her. She hung her head forward and swatched as the black shot up her tentacles, replacing the fearful pale grey that had adorned her form. She let out a meager, half-hearted chuckle before uttering one of the few human words that she had adopted in her syntax, which seemed to fit her current situation quite nicely. Fuck. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.